Hello, Sheriff. Sorry to bother you, but there's a pretty weird old British doctor here to see you. Is he wearing a trench coat? That's him. Oh, well, you better send him in. It's probably hugely important. Okay, then. Sheriff. Sheriff. Ah, uh, hello, Doctor. Doctor. It, it was uh, Doctor, right? Yes, yes, I am a, a Doctor. Doctor Doomsayer. Any relation to the Rhode Island Doomsayers? Uh, I believe they were Chiropodists or something. Anyway, lovely couple, Celia and Greg. Although, <laughs> if you know Greg, when he got drunk, he could really... No, <laughs> no I, I don't know them, and I, I don't believe we're related. Shame, shame. Greg has a lovely house, and his daughter, Peregrine, just learned how to tie a half boson threepenny knot in camp. And now all the local yachtsmen, mm. of course, they were... Sorry, Sheriff. It is rather urgent. Oh, of course, of course. Where are my manners? So, uh, would you like some tea? I know, I know. Not the usual coffee swillers here. <laughs> We're branching out. I, I believe Eric even has some Lapsang Souchong. <laughs> no, no tea, please. I, I must tell you. Right, right. Yes, yeah, so sorry. Uh, what, what's the matter? Death hmm. has come to your small town, Sheriff. I'm sorry, but could you be more specific? You need to be aware what you're up against. He's no man. Uh, so a woman, then? Uh, maybe a non-binary transgender, uh, gender fluid, third sex, uh, gender gifted, androgynous, perhaps? No, no, no. Pure and simply evil. I met him 15 years ago. I was told there was nothing left. No reason, no conscience, no understanding, and even the most rudimentary sense of life or death or good or evil, right or wrong... I met this six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face and the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. So it is a he, and it's a child? Uh, sorry, this is all sounding rather vague and confusing. Okay, right, look. There's a bloody great serial killer in a boiler suit and a mask who's escaped a mental institution. Well, wait, uh, that's not very PC from where I come from. We call them psychiatric hospitals or places for brainial rehabilitation. Look, he's a hulking great loony maniac in a mask who's looking to come to your small town and carve up some bleeding babysitters. Oh, right, right. Well, uh, we should go find him and stop him then. Wait, wait, you're, you're just going to believe me? Just like that? Well, well, yes. I mean, we have to take any reported threat to the public seriously. Well, well, that that's not how this works. What what, what do you mean? No, uh, look, we can't stand around talking. We, we've done far too much of that already. <laughs> it's my fault as much as yours. But, uh, look, I, I need to uh, take down and arrest this uh, ear serial killer you're talking about. Please, please, Sheriff, could, could you at least be just a little sceptical? Uh, no, I, I don't know why you would ask that. Now, look, could you give a description to our sketch artist, Alan? Uh, I'm going to call in the rest of our squad. No, 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 this is all wrong. What, what now? Well, you're not meant to believe me. There's, there's meant to be no one in the station who can talk in full sentences, let alone sketch artists and whatnot. And then when word accidentally gets out of there being a serial killer, local gangs of wild, drunk hillbillies are meant to ride around shooting innocent bystanders by mistake. Well, and well that, do that doesn't sound very productive. And, and, and may I say, that also sounds incredibly uh, stereotypical and judgmental of our... Uh, local uh, inhabitants. Let me just tell you right now that the uh, people of this town are incredibly, incredibly uh, well-learned people and uh, uh, respective of all the races, creeds, genders. And well, it may not sound <clears throat> very productive, but you'd be surprised. I mean, despite quite a lot of collateral damage and several gruesome deaths, we do normally catch him in the end. Well, then what happens? Well, then we kill him. What? Oh, but he doesn't stay dead. And, well, like I said, it's not really a man in the traditional sense anyway. Look, th this is all starting to sound very far-fetched and repetitive. Are, are, are you sure about all of this? That's more like it. What? Perfect level of skepticism. Let's go. All right, look, I'll follow you alone, but if this turns out to be a waste of time, I'm locking you up. No! You're getting it? You really are very strange. You don't know the half of it. In my spare time, I like to pretend I'm Sir Edmund Hillary and I construct a giant mountain out of old shoeboxes and marshmallows. <coughs> and now on Radio Flange Goblet, it's something even more horrific than that last sketch. 
It's the Halloween episode of the After Movie Diner. <laughs> You're listening to the After Movie Diner with your host, John Cross. That's right, I am John Cross, and down, 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 deep down, deep inside, I'm just always a little unsure about what my shoe size really is. Well, welcome ladies. Ladies in large trousers, ladies in broad-brimmed hats, ladies who go by the name of Herbert, ladies who aren't afraid to poke us one, ladies who were until recently members of the band Shawaddy Waddy, ladies who prefer ice cream shaped like gynecological sketches, ladies who have punched a herring, ladies who roll under other ladies carrying large citrus fruit, ladies who are called Ethel but ask you in a high-pitched voice and with excessive drooling to call them Ethel, ladies who prefer to be called women, women who prefer to be called gals, gals who prefer to be called toots, and gentlemen hiding in the corner hoping not to say anything too derogatory when a little person walks into a bar and orders a highball. Welcome one and welcome all. Before we get to this week's show, I normally uh, remind you to support our show on Patreon by going over to patreon.com forward slash aftermoviediner or to buy one of the miscellaneous plumbing fixtures albums or to donate to the show by pressing the buy us a coffee button on the website or to rate and review us on iTunes. I mean, really, I do ask you to do a ton of stuff at the beginning of each show and I'm sure sure it gets tedious. Well, you can still do all that, and it would be more appreciated than Roger Moore walking into a very expensive hotel room in the south of France to find three Peruvian call girls, a donkey, a vat of scotch, and some after-eight mints. But this week's show is brought to you by the new album from Motown Media, Mo75. That's M-O-75, by the band The Big Heist, featuring the excellent musicianship and songwriting talents of Matt Farley, Tom Scalzo, Pete Peterson, and Doug Brennan, better known to the world as Froggy. It's a tremendous 12-track album, which is available to listen to on Spotify, Google Play, and Amazon Music, and available to purchase on iTunes, Amazon, CD Baby, or wherever music is found. It is Mo75, that's M-O-75, by the band The Big Heist. And we're going to be playing a few selections throughout the show, so please do sit back and enjoy this first offering, which is called The Longest Day. And then we're going to slip ever so gingerly and wearing something fabulous, into a diner in New York City. Well, the longest day was already three weeks ago and right now there's a heat wave, but soon the nights will be getting cold and sure, it'll be nice to sleep without the air conditioning, but as soon as Has been a while. A while. It's been a while. One of us is ma- well. We're both married now. Uh, yeah, I'm married, but not uh, to each other. No, <laughs> that's Hello. not the. That's Wait, not the. That's you went there. That's well, that was. The no, first I'm just saying. I, I said we're both married now, and I realize that might sound like the reason for the break is that we went off and got married. <laughs> that we went off and got we, married. Yeah. I think people, having listened to this show for as long as they've been listening, yeah. um, they would probably find it surprising if we had anything. <laughs> <laughs> else to say anything no no if we had anything approaching you know admiration love <laughs> admiration <laughs> desire I have admi- okay no alright you know what I'm saying though you're saying at best we have tolerance 
Well, no, we're like going. If we if we reach really deep down inside, like the best parts of ourselves, we can dredge up tolerance. For and, each other. Well, we have patience and tolerance. Patience. Right. Um, we're like the married couple that have been together for fifty years and are just kind of <laughs> <laughs> lim- limping along, knowing just that waiting to die, <laughs> knowing that there's get no- on with it, knowing that there's nothing else out there worth doing. Yeah. Um, well, that is true. That- <laughs> Um, As this movie neatly encapsulates. Well, actually. anyway, let's not go there yet. Sorry, mate. Um, Sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. Sorry. So, it has been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. Um, but we're back. Uh, the After Movie Diner is back. Uh, just in time to uh, squeak one out uh, like a little... <laughs> no. No. Move. The metaphor does not need to be completed. I'd like that to be an unfinished simile forever. <laughs> to squeak one out right. just before no. Halloween okay. um, and uh, this this is a very special episode uh, because not only is it the first episode back uh, with me as t- married man t- married. Tut married man t- married. Uh, which I am yes. now I am t- married um, but uh, also uh, it is uh, podcast co-host day I've declared it oh, is podcast it? co-host day oh. because I feel oh, you've like, declared it right well because I feel I feel this and tell me if I'm wrong you and I yes. started doing the show like this in diners yes and we did have that moment where I like declared you an official co-host kind of thing did that happen it did happen it did happen I there, there was a moment I vaguely remember feeling proud yeah like a year or two ago <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean but beyond that I had pride in myself but beyond that a distant memory right we've but... never we've not really shone a light on you uh, it's, it's always been about uh, the podcast Patreon uh, 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 reviewing us on iTunes, uh, right? Uh, you know, buying some merch. It's always been about either the after movie diner in general, yeah, or me as the big egomaniacal host who yeah. kind of without whom rules, the wheels would not turn. Who kind of rules everything? Which is what with happened an because you you go off and get married and right. there's nothing, nothing. It's just it's just a waste. Well, now. that's why you're <laughs> that's why you're the co-host and right. not you're not the guy who's like well if he's gone for two weeks I'm going to roll up my sleeves and do my and own I'll dig show. in and I'll, I'll dig in you'll get a, another I, I got, the, the thought occurred to me that maybe I, I could do that and like take the pressure off you a bit and make right. sure there was still right. a small amount but of money rolling into a it. pocket but then, then I didn't, didn't. Yeah, well because yeah. the trouble is is I realised that what I like what I do is I go to the cinema with people and other than you I don't go to the cinema with anyone right and who'd go to the cinema with me unless you kind of had to right. <laughs> you know what I mean right who would sit next to your smell? Right. Uh, if, if it wasn't beneficial to some sort of podcast. Right. Um, and he's quite right, ladies and gentlemen. But I do feel, I do feel uh, that on this episode, uh, as it's our Halloween episode, I would like to turn it over and just sort of say, uh, uh, I, have a, I have a wonderful co-host. Thanks, man. Uh, he's a pretty great co-host. He's awesome. Uh, and uh, known him a long time. And I think uh, this week's thing, Right. Should be follow you on Twitter. Oh, yeah, please. Follow you on Twitter. That would be great. Thank you So why don't you tell everyone your Twitter handle? Oh, okay. So it's... Fuck, I think I forgot my Twitter handle. It is at J underscore E underscore A underscore Wallace, capital W. I've really got to come up with a better handle, haven't I? Yeah, you really have. Well, it's a shitty... I mean, when it's up there with the (laughs) shittiest of handles. No, it's not. Um, Yeah, but it should be like, you know... Bobcat Ball Lake or <laughs> something like easy to remember. It should be Bobcat Ball Lake. Can you explain to me why <laughs> why it, it would it be it trips that? off the tongue. Well, you know what I mean? So does just Jim at yeah, but Jim. I, I'm pretty sure at Jim is taken. Okay, but at... What about at according to Jim? You could pay reference to the James Belushi TV series that went like six seasons. Did it? Yeah. It went like eight seasons, actually. <laughs> well, we're not alone in thinking, you know, that Belushi has has talent and charisma. Uh, yeah, but not in that TV. Like, I never that saw was, that TV It was show. the lowest. If if you want, like lowest common denominator American sitcom, look no further. Did he say things that were insufferable, and then his family went, "Do oh. yes, that happened." Right. Uh, one of the oh, one of the famous. Did he have daughters true. that he really didn't understand? One, well, I probably. <laughs> One of one of the famous uh, 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 slapstick sequences that have gone down in television history right. um, is he 
makes himself an enormous plate of food. Right. Right. And puts it on like a TV dinner tray. Right. 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 Uh, then he si- and then he sits down. Then he realizes, oh, he doesn't have like the bottle opener for his beer. So he has to like put the tray down, get up, get the beer. This is already gone. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Sit back down. Anyway, he gets his like tall glass and finally pours the beer in it until the beer is right at the top of the glass. Right, and and just at the, the moment thing. when everything looks great. <laughs> Then he realizes he doesn't have the remote control or something, right? Then the phone rings. Like, it goes on and on and on. Right, right. Right, until he spills a bit of beer on himself because his friend shows up at the door. That's it? That's it. Yeah. That's what it builds to? That's what it builds to. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like one of those like bottle episodes, whatever, where the whole episode is just him doing that and he just goes on and on. No, and no, because that would be actually something inventive. And challenging. And challenging. Yeah, I'm like the movie. Uh, hey, how you doing? How are you? Good, thank you. I right. have I have not chosen yet. I'm oh, you don't, so you don't sorry. know what you want? I have just two more minutes. Okay. Sorry, I was, I was right ready. Here. Right. Sorry, okay. I'm still... I'm still looking. This is a wonderful uh, menu. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm actually having trouble. I would. I've gone with the house special. As it's co-host actually, day, why don't you tell the listeners where we are? Oh, okay. We are in the Murray Avenue. Is that where we are? What's no, Murray called? Hill Diner. Murray Hill Diner. We're in the Murray Hill Diner. <laughs> there's no Murray Avenue. You just made that up. <laughs> I did. That's what I was saying. I was going, but there's no Murray. Avenue. Murray Hill Diner. We're at the um, intersection. If you stand on the corner of this street, right outside the diner, yeah. you can see both the Empire State Building yeah, down over, one out, down one street. Over, over to the west. And down Third Avenue, you can see cr- the Chrysler Third Building, Avenue. which is not... I've, I've never come across that before. You can see both buildings both at buildings once. Both buildings at once. I mean, except from far away. Far, very or far high, above. high above. Or high above or far away. High above or far away. High above or far away. away. <laughs> Maybe that should be my Twitter handle, high above or far away. No, don't ever do that. I'd rather no. Bobcat Burgers or whatever you said. <laughs> Bobcat Bull Bo- 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 Lake. Bobcat Bo- 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 <laughs> Old Jimmy Bullsack. Oh, Jimmy the Bullsack. B- B- old Jim- Jimmy the Bullsack. He's not that. He's, he's uh, J underscore E underscore A underscore Wallace. Wallace. W A L L A C E. Yeah, I should do that. And the only reason that I like. Because you were saying to me the other day, oh, I'm trying to get some followers, and I'd really like more followers on Twitter. And I suddenly realised that, like, in all the, although I tag you in everything that I do, so I tag you on Facebook and I tag you in on Twitter, I, we've never made like a big deal about no. the fact that while you can reach out to the host of the After Movie Diner, you can also reach out to you the can co-host. also reach out to the co-host. Ask me any questions bother you him. like. Bother yeah, bother him. me. I've got, I've got opinions. I've got opinions. He has got opinions, and he will and tell fresh. you. He they're will fresh. tell you them at length. <laughs> I don't know how fresh they are. I don't know how fresh they are because often his opinions feel like something that he's just picked off the underside of his shoe, dusted off, put in a back pocket for later. But that's. I mean, that's. Those are the best opinions of all. Man. They are. Well, they they are opinions. They are. I don't get as, any better opinions than opinions that. They're like road tested opinions. What are you having? I'm going to have the chicken Florentine. Oh, lardy bloody Grilled dog. chicken with spinach, feta cheese, grated parmesan cheese, feta. and marinara sauce on garlic hero bread. Fetid cheese. Feta. Feta. Come on, he's back now. Hey, no, 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 I know what I'm on. I'm oh, he knows what he wants. Cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm so can I get right. the, the chicken Florentine? Chicken Florentine sandwich. Yes, okay. please. Thank you very much. And no I, fries, right? Uh, no fries, no, thank you. No, okay. Um, and uh, can I also get uh, just a cup of uh, English breakfast tea? English breakfast tea. Yes, with okay. milk. Thank you. Okay. Can I get the chicken pot pie? Same chick, right? No more chicken pot pie. I'm sorry. Oh, oh dear. See, look at that. Oh, Wait dear. two minutes. I, oh, I ordered something and there's no more of it. Uh, I'll be very quick then. Uh, what they got? What they got? What they got? Fresh. I bring you the tea. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. I'll be great. Thank you. something to drink? Uh, yes. Um, no, I'm fine with water. Okay. I'm good with water. Thank you. <laughs> Murray Hill, hot pastrami with melted Swiss cheese and stuff. So- Look, why don't you just order ham, egg and chips? You know that's what you're going to order. I'm not just gonna order ask the guy for ham, egg and chips. What's okay. Murray Hill? Do you want to get a bacon potato omelet? A bacon potato omelet? I don't know, but you usually get like... Shh. <laughs> okay. What will he get? What will he order in his sweater? I like your sweater. <laughs> What, what, what will I order in my sweater? <laughs> yeah. At in my sweater. <laughs> <laughs> you could start up another Twitter handle. Okay. And be at. In I'm my very, sweater. I'm very literal and not very clued in as to like why why things work or why they're good. You know, so when I set up the Twitter account. Well, no. To be to be fair. I tried at J. A. Wallace. I tried to be consistent. But to be fair, the whole J. E. A. thing. 
mm -hmm. is because uh, your writer name when, writer you, name. when you publish my poetry, nom de plume when you publish poetry is yep. J E A Wallace. J A Wallace, yeah. Like um, uh, uh, J R Hartley. Exactly like J R Hartley. Yeah. yeah. And then, oh, 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 the name, the name, J. J. R. Hartley. <laughs> He's very sweet. He is. Do you know what you want? For this like, yes, I do know what I want. Thank you very much. Lovely smash uh, I'd like the Murray Hill, please. Murray Hill omelette or Murray Hill sandwich? Murray Hill sandwich, please. Okay. The hot pastrami with the Swiss and the... Okay, Murray Hill sandwich. You got it, buddy. Great. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you. Lovely. Um... Yeah, so you were trying to set up your uh, both Facebook and Twitter handles to correspond with exactly, I mean, your and virgin that, and that writing. And Wallace was not available, right. weirdly. So you became J. So I did the underscores because that's, that's my well, It's that's also my the email. same as your brother is at John underscore underscore Wallace because he couldn't just be underscore <laughs> one, one Wallace. He probably, knowing him, he probably just pressed the... Like the underscore was too often, and there was just too lazy to press to lead. No, no, no. I think it's because there's already a there's a John Wallace who's a photographer, and there's also a John Wallace who's like a, a trumpet player or, or something like that. So he's an exalted company. Well, I don't know. I mean, have you ever heard of John Wallace, the trumpet player? No, no. Well, I've heard of John Wallace, the science fiction author extraordinaire. Right, exactly. Ah, uh, your brother, my pal. He should have been like John Wallace, SF. No, you see, no, he shouldn't have been John Wallace SF because okay. that could all equally. That would limit his. That could genre. have also been John Wallace shitface <laughs> or, <laughs> or John Wallace right. stupid front. Stupid face. <laughs> I know it's the same as shitface, but it's just it's nicer. It's but more family have, friendly. You have the. I'm more, basically the more family friendly co-host of the podcast. But you, you, know I mean? you have the more if, stupid when, face of the two of you. That, well, that's true. <laughs> but if and when this podcast takes off into the stratosphere, I feel right. like. When Disney come calling, right? Do you know what I mean? To syndicate us, yeah. or whatever. You're like, the one that they that, go. Can we? They will get it? rid of you. I just want you to know they will get rid of you. Me? Yo, oh, yeah. Because I'm more family friendly. That's what I'm saying. Oh wait, you're, you're just like a, you're just a bucket of knob jokes. It's too much for Disney, mate. Oh wait, you're, sa you're saying. If you were on HBO, they'd get rid of me. You're saying they'd get rid I'm, of me. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, it'd be rubbish. <laughs> and so I say, if HBO like syndicated the podcast, it would be like you right. and I don't know. Um, Rob Cordy. Who's that really someone? angry American guy that shouts all the time? He's like a comedian. Lewis Black. You and Lewis Black. That's who the podcast would be. It's two people yelling at each other. Yeah, but I don't think that's the dynamic people want. I think people no, I like agree. the dynamic. No, I'm, they'd that you ruin and I it. Have. They'd ruin it. They would ruin it. They just go. Well, that, with him again? Only American, so I, it's more you know that, relatable. They'd replace you with like Seth Green or something. Yeah, you know what they would, wouldn't they? That's it. You're right. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's exactly what they would do. They yeah. would replace me with Seth Green. Or Rob Corden. And you with Seth Rogen. Oh, fuck. And it yeah. would no longer be our show. We'd just be, like, better. And we'd have to start something called, like, The After Movie Donut or something. <laughs> the After Movie Donut? Yeah. Or Donut? After Movie Donut. I like it. Then we go to like, Dunkin' Donuts or Donut Joints around the city. Oh, OK. Because it's got another hook. Right. But after, I thought you were like after movie donor where we both have to like give up our livers or something. <laughs> well, we've got to come up with a gimmick, mate, because it's green and rogan are taking us to the cleanest. <laughs> so we have to sit we have to sit there and go through like uh, dialysis or whatever. So okay, well here's one way we can do okay. Here's one way we can differentiate ourselves from Rogan and Green right here, right now. I'm willing to bet well, first of all Dollars to Donuts, yeah. Rogan and Green really love the Halloween movie. Right. Right? Well, they have to because, uh, uh, well, Rogan has to because his friend co-wrote Right, but you also know they would really like it. <sighs> well, I, d I mean, I don't, I don't know. Well, people seem to, right? Well, it's made a lot of money. Right. But there's, uh, and I kind of want to get into that. I, I'm, I'm, okay, so. If you want to frame it, if you want to use something that we like to call in the podcasting world, a framing I'm, I'm only, <laughs> I'm only letting you go down this tunnel because one or two. First of all, it's. I was so confident. I was so on. confident. Second, I was going to be able to come up with something. The framing, a framing something. Right? I get. A framing devi device. I was just looking for the word device, and it just. Why, why were you looking for the word device? I don't know. It was right I can look there, for the word. I can look framing. for the word device. I know. With a big light I around know. it. <laughs> Mostly, people only say the word framing when it's followed by the word device, especially if they're arseheads. Or who are like framing, framing, which is basically what. Uh, that's what I bring to the podcast. 
I broke the podcast things what? that make people roll their eyes. Subpar comedian ha- bollocks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How often do you think people roll their eyes when I start talking? A fair few, right? No, so, I don't. I, I don't think, think it could they... be as high as sixty percent. I think they. Hang I, on... I reckon I get. I think they hang on ten to Or whether you're going to have one chamomile tea, <laughs> green tea, or regular tea. Yeah, but I'm not even that. Inter- like the tea is the not interesting part of my order. No, people love the tea. People love the tea. Because well, they like... That's, see, that's my point, right? People I like don't know what they're going to get. I'm too Americanized. No, because you get the same food, which... Uh, I they, haven't which for some I've reason, Mont- No, no, I Mariana. agree. But for some reason, they don't like that you get the same food. But they, they really like don't. that I get the same tea. Who, like, no, no, they, you have three different teas in the past. When your stomach was a bit chippy, you used to have the true. chamomile that's and the green. True. That's true. Now you're a bit hardier. I know, but they don't expect me to order the green or the caramel anymore. They know they don't. that. No, but they like the fact that I order the tea. Pass. It's like, oh, that's his signature. But with Ooh. you, like, ham, Chips. egg, and chips just makes you dull. That's right, ham, egg, and chips do make me dull. But you know what doesn't make me dull? Listening to Mo 75 by The Big Heist on Spotify. Uh, or buying it on iTunes, both of which I've done. <laughs> anyway, let's listen to their song, Crossroads, not the, uh, you know, Crossroads, Robert Johnson, crowd, but their song, Crossroads, from the album Mo 75 by The Big Heist. It's kicking. <laughs> You know what we haven't done? Okay, well, uh, uh, our new feature, oh, which yeah. is our uh, uh, oh, yeah. life advice, or whatever it is. <laughs> life, by new, you mean life bits. We came up with it a month ago. Life oh, bits. Our, well, I think you should be the life bit, because I gave my life bits last time. I it gave should be my your, life bits. No, you didn't. You've forgotten the bit completely. I was the one that gave the life bits. I, I can't remember what my advice was. You're, you're, it no, was pretty my, good, though. I gave you advice about what to do on trains. I gave you the life bit about your insane paranoia about the person from work who you saw on the Oh, is the that what that was? Yeah, and I gave you the life bit. I was it my turn. So I have to come up with a problem, but I don't have any problems right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I have problems. That's nice. But, you don't have any problems. Well, I have problems, but they're all deep-rooted in my own yeah, insecurities. Yeah, I can't hope to solve that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can, man. What I mean is, I didn't sit opposite someone at co-worker... <laughs> On a train and pretend to be. Asleep. Can I just say that John, when John came over for your wedding, right? When my brother came over for a wedding, yeah. he was the only person that gave me sympathy for that. So it is genetic. Uh, so, life bits, though. What bits of advice can we do? forget? Us. Okay. What bits so of just advice like more general advice. we depart to the list? Well, how about how about in a, how, how about, about don't go and see Halloween 2018 if you haven't already? Yeah. How about point. that? That's, yeah, that's, no, that's life a good advice. That's a very good advice. Just don't go see it. Don't bother. How about this? How about this? How about um, if you haven't already, I kind of, I kind of like put it all on front street though. Now no one's going to listen to our actual review of the thing because they're going to be like, "Oh, of course, the grumpy old man didn't like it," and then they're going to turn yeah, up. Yeah, but I, I, I had no axe to grind at all. Like I don't even, I don't even think that the original Halloween is in. Well, I know it's not in my top twenty horror movies. Like it's just not. I'm not saying it's not good. Like it's a good film and I like it. It's just I'm not precious about it at all. I You're not think a it's slasher like, fan. No, it's like no, no, I don't mind slasher films at all. But I definitely prefer. Look at that! Look at that! that. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. chief. Brilliant. Everything good, my friends? Do you want my pickle? Are you a pickle man? Uh, and no, when not, I say not, pickle, not I'm not talking about my penis. I'm mm. talking about this fucking 
vinegar-soaked cucumber that Americans seem to stick on every goddamn sandwich. Goddamn, that's a good sandwich. I'm gonna have to eat it with a knife and fork. Can I put it on your dish? Uh, yeah. Oh, it's dripping everywhere. Ugh. I do like pickles, just I'm not. No, they're the worst. Nose. Stop putting them on my sandwiches. No, I'm very well. I'm fond of them when I have like a shrimp roll. You're fondling them. You're I'm fondling fond of them. You're fondling pickles. Ugh. When I have a shrimp roll, a pickle goes an absolute treat with a shrimp roll. So here's a, a pickle with a shrimp roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're all kinds of gross. No, I'm not at all. Um, what other life hacks can we give people? This, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, do, bit this. doesn't work. Does it? <laughs> it does. What about the thing that I did today, which is I cancelled Movie Pass and I got AMC. What's it called again? Oh, don't stop pimping for AMC. They're not giving us any money. Well, Movie Pass. Right, well, we didn't really pimp for them either. That'd be good. Well, you kind of did. You went on. It became your little thing to grind. Well, I'm not getting anything from them. I'm just saying, we go and see a lot of movies. Yeah. Right? We've got assiduous users of Movie Pass for a long time. The AMC We've been unable to A-list use it. Now we Right, because you can't see stuff. So it's like, fuck it. Yeah, but that's a serious life hack. All right, well, this All bit right. doesn't work. We don't We're going to cut this, this bit out in here. No, what, was the, what was the what was the woman's name who had like bits of advice? Oh, I come Nina, Nina 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 Nina, not, Nina, <laughs> Nina Santa Maria Nina Nina Meister Nina 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 Meister Nina Nina Meister. Yeah. Well, we'll leave bits of advice to her then. This clearly doesn't work. Clearly, this podcast game is harder than we. Uh... I would say this. Right. Buried deep within. Right. The last two hundred and whatever episodes of the Alpha Movie Diner is all the advice you need, mate. <laughs> That's true. Buried deep within. There That's are true. Li- if you listen to every single episode of the Alpha Movie Diner, there be you life will lessons. Be, will they be wiser? <sighs> Just bearing in mind, by listening to the Alpha Movie Diner, they will be not listening to or doing other things. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, but there are other the- things people could be doing with their lives that right. are more rewarding than listening to this. Well, clearly. Right. I mean, for example, on honeymoon, I went snorkeling and saw pretty fish. That was infinitely more rewarding. Actually, that's not true. This is by far one of the most rewarding things I do with my life is come see movies with you and talk about them in a diner. All joking aside, that is legitimately one of the more rewarding things I do with my life. I would agree with you on that. I am also kept modestly, moderately sane by doing it. But I cannot say that listening to this... Yeah, it's not, yeah. It's not the same as doing it. No. I do feel for the listeners. So stop listening and go do it, (laughs) is what we're saying. Which is, I think, a great message for a podcast to put out there. Just stop listening. (laughs) World's full of white men talking about bollocks. Um, That's true. So, with the Halloween movie, I'm right. a little bit right. unsure of how to proceed because how do we how do we talk about the fact that it's rubbish without sounding like we're being precious? But that's why I wanted to say I don't have anything for no no. But with the, before we get into the actual movie itself, right. I've been sitting on a whole bunch of questions, especially surrounding like the conversation around this movie, right. most predominantly spearheaded by Jamie Lee Curtis herself, right. and gleefully picked up by the likes of People and Entertainment Weekly and everyone else, because everything is for sale and, and everything is worth shilling, even if it means apparently removing the last vestiges of your soul. Right. Um, But, so I don't know whether I want to talk about that. Like, I don't know whether I want to go chronologically. Okay. In other words, how do I feel about the franchise? How do you feel about the franchise? Then go into the marketing of the new movie and then talk about the new movie. Talk about structure, right. Talk about the movie and then double back on that other stuff. I think we should just talk about the movie. At least to start with, because I think all the rest of it, will, will, it'll just come. All right, all right. But it's up to you. Listen, mate, this is no, your, just, this is very much your rodeo. Just remind me. You said you want... Okay, let me put it another way then. You said before we did this that you had something you wanted to get off your chest. I do, yeah. So why don't we start there? Well, I want to put the review of the movie in some sort of context. Okay. 
the, the thing I have to go off my chest I think can happen at the end. Okay. But I think I want to preface, like you prefaced, I have no axe to grind, blah, 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 blah. Right. I want to preface. Yeah. Um, if you're right. Well, because I think everybody thinks that I, I'm a grumpy old man. I just hate things indiscriminately. I'm bitter and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And it's very difficult to... No, I get it. You want to be... Uh... Well, no, it's very difficult to say, actually, I personally just feel like I'm discerning. And I don't mean in a pompous, better than everyone else way. I just mean in terms of my tastes and in yeah. terms of my opinions. I feel that I am, rather than just being like... Because I see a lot of this online. And I don't mean that this is a bad thing. But I see a lot of people who have the opinion of, well, I've always been a fan of the Halloween franchise. And even if it's slightly compromised, more of that is a good thing. And we should be happy that there is more of that out there. Right. And I'm not completely of that opinion. Uh, you know, my, I'm, I've said a lot that I feel that, for me, the franchise finishes with H2O. Right. Because I feel that... One, two, and seven work great as a Laurie Strode trilogy. Four, five, and six, while also trying to tell some other stories which I really wish they'd kind of fleshed out and actually got into, although they didn't because after six there was a whole bunch of legal hoojama flips until H2O came out years later. But four, five, and six sort of tells the Jamie Lloyd story, at least four and five does with like the beginning of six. Three is its own thing. It's Tom Atkins and the masks and the season of the witch and the whole thing, which is its own thing and has gained quite legitimately its own following and, and all power to it because it's a really good movie. Um, and it should just be called season of the witch. It shouldn't be called Halloween anything because I think then people are like, well, let's, you know, people go, well, it's my favorite Halloween movie. And I'm like, yeah, but it's, it's a completely different beast to the like Halloween right. one and two. Like Pip, Pip, pitting it against Halloween 1, which is sort of the the godfather of its genre, even though it's predated by Black Christmas and Psycho and a few others. Halloween is still considered the godfather of the cliches in the genre of the slasher horror. Um, and to pit that against Season of the Witch, it's just not, it's two completely different things. Um, it's like trying to talk about Return of the Living Dead and, and Night of the Living Dead. Like it's too... They're, they're certainly related, but they're not within the same franchise. Um, and even that's not a good example, whatever. Upshot of all that is, um, because of my, I, I have a genuine love and fandom of slasher horror films. And the first franchise of slasher horror films that I personally got into and has stuck with me to this day is the Halloween franchise. And I've seen all the Fridays, and I've seen the Nightmares. That's like the two other big franchises. Um, and I certainly have some affection for the Friday series, and there's a few of the Nightmares that I enjoy. But Halloween is always the one that I come back to, even though certainly since Part 7, or even before Part 7 in some people's opinion, but after Part 7 it's become a compromised and confusing mess because uh, 8 is... Eight is just an absolute terrible movie that commits the cardinal sin of retconning the end of H2O and killing Laurie Strode. In Which like one's eight? What's the one blow? Eight, eight is a Resurrection, and it's the one okay. with Buster Rhymes <laughs> literally doing Kung Fu on Michael Myers after a hoary attempt to kind of crowbar in reality TV commentary with the Halloween franchise. It's really fucking awful. Oh, and ride the coattails of like paranormal activity and all that kind of shit. Um, and it's just a it's just a mess of a movie. And it it the reason why I strike it from the record is because Halloween H two O, in my way of thinking, has a perfect fucking end, a perfect fucking ending to the franchise. Laurie Strode in that movie has a wonderful character arc. She ends up taking back the power, taking back the strength, taking off Michael's head, and unless you're going to have Michael's head grow tentacles like out of the thing and scurry off and just admit that he is supernatural, that puts an end to the franchise. You lop right. his fucking head off. 
Right. And you do it with in a really cool way, in my way of thinking. Like, I really enjoy the end of H2O. H2O has its issues, and that would be another episode, but I really like the ending of H2O, and I think that Jamie Lee Curtis's character arc, and we'll get into the marketing of that later in the episode, but Jamie Lee Curtis's character arc in H2O is so much more satisfying and interesting than Halloween 2018. Um, so that's where I come I come from someone who is very passionate about the first seven Halloween movies seen them all multiple times huge Donald Pleasance fan huge Jamie Lee Curtis fan huge John Carpenter fan just all all round to, it's my you know next to Evil Dead it's like my horror franchise um, so there's that everyone knows that I'm obviously predisposed to like dislike remakes um, I also think it's incredibly lazy writing to just go, well, let's forget Halloween 2 through 7 and or 2 through 8 and just do our own thing. Like, you can forget Halloween 8 and maybe you could have continued the, the Strode story after H2O, although it would have been fairly redundant. I would have preferred to not go with Laurie Strode and go with like a, a, a building out of part five and six, which has a, a lot of stuff about um, this underground society that sort of been worshiping Myers and like tried to delve into some of Myers's like supernatural tendencies tied with like a, um, a long lasting kind of conspiracy thing, which I'm a fan of, people aren't, but I'm, I'm kind of like a fan of that kind of stuff. Um, but at least if you're going to uh, uh, do a new one and you want to have Laurie in it, I just don't know that <clears throat> completely getting rid of all the other films was the way I would have gone. Um, and while I was very, very skeptical <clears throat> going in, I was also very, very intrigued. And what I really wanted, because I think people go in, people think I go in with like, I'm not going to like this, so I'm not going to like this. Right. I actually went in going, please surprise me. Like, please show me. I'll, I'll, I, I went in with like, I will give you the benefit of the doubt if you just give me 15 minutes that I can go, at that, that, that I can hang my hat on and go, it's worthy that this exists in the franchise because of them 15 minutes. If you could have given me that, I would have forgiven the whole movie and I really went in with that in my heart my head like just all you have to do Gordon Green is just like get, and, and Jamie Lee Curtis like just give me that 10-15 minutes and it just it just didn't do it so that's that's how I went into the movie do you think that prefaces our discussion of the film well yeah. or yeah, would yeah. you well, add I to that it, no no I mean I think I think all I would say I pretty much said the idea that I went in I mean I'm, I'm always a bit um, I'm, I like being surprised anyway, right? And I will give things the benefit of the doubt that, like the other day, I watched Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunter. And while I was watching Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunter, I enjoy that. Right, I was this is quite good. This is all right. This is quite fun. I'm enjoying this. I won't watch it again, but it was fun no, for a Saturday afternoon. But it, was, it wasn't bad at all. <laughs> um, so I'm always like in the mood to be, you know, surprised and entertained, right? And plus, I'm not precious. Now, if, if this had been... Like, I almost certainly will never see the remake of The Salt Precinct 13, right? Because right. I fucking love The Salt Precinct 13. And I won't see the prequel. I might see the prequel to the thing. I don't mind if it's a prequel. Because, like, that's fine. <coughs> the prequel to the thing was redundant for two reasons. A, because in John Carpenter's The Thing... It basically fills in all the story beats that the prequel has to do anyway because they go to the Norwegian's right. camp and shows you so much of it. But secondly, because all they chose to do was essentially remake the thing, but as a prequel, and then cumbersomely had to hit all the bits you knew they had to hit based on the deaths they discover. and the thing. So it became like I'm just a saying, whole... I'm just saying. I haven't seen it. I'm just saying. My point is... I don't want to see a certain piece in 13 because I love a certain piece in 13 and this with Fishburne and Hawk is, is just it's a remake so I'm not really interested in that because I, I just I don't see how you could do it better however 
I can't see a, a remake of the thing. I don't want to see that either because I can't see do it better. But if you're going to tell a story before that, that's right. That could be garbage. It could be like sea level garbage. But that's okay because um, it's just it's the thing that happened before, and I can I can live. Do you know what I mean? For whatever reason, right. I can live with that. So I don't have any like I don't know about four, five, six, or um, like whether two happened or didn't happen, or I didn't even know the resurrection fight. Like I'm so not in any way right. up on what happened to who when in the Halloween franchise. But it's a you know big famous horror movie. People are saying nice things about it. It's got Jamie Lee Curtis in it. Carpenter's Blessing, Carpenter's Music. I'm interested. And I knew, in, in ways that often happen to me, I knew within five minutes that I was going to hate it. Yep. And it was the moment when he was holding up the mask, like, Gang, look at it, say something, say something. Well, well first of all, the two people found, like, did everybody in the film except for Jamie Lee Curtis have to be and Will Patton have to be like really terrible they yeah. were all awful like yeah. really like who was Will Patton? Oh, awful uh, the sheriff right. oh yeah yeah but the, the, the boyfriend was a dick the fat man um, Fred was a dick the two people in the podcast were dicks everybody was a dick and not like in a, oh, I hope they get kicked. But just like, I don't even want to look at your face. Yeah, yeah the two journalists at the beginning. They were just awful. That was such a... Somewhere along the line. See, this is my other problem. So this talks to... Anyway, sorry, just can I very quickly... Finish up. Yeah, 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 yeah. The reason I, I knew I was going to hate it was... He was holding up the mask, going, say something, say something, say something. And all around him, like, the lunatics are going crazy, and the dogs are barking. And it was all completely phony. Do you know what I mean? Like, there wasn't anything of, like, like a real moment of, I've bought this mask for you, that you haven't seen in 40 years. The thing that you wore to cover yourself, you know. Because the, the point is, it's not about the mask, right? It was never about the mask. It, I don't even know where clown, they... He puts a clown mask on when he's a kid. He just doesn't want his face to be seen. He wanted to presumably... I mean, I'm sure people have written about what the mask thing is, but it's not like... Supernatural. Oh, this mask is special. But like it means something to you. So he could have held up anyone. But anyway, even leaving aside that, right? Even though that's not a lot of bollocks. In fact, do you know what would have been interesting? What's that? Had in this movie, when he escaped, he put a different mask yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the mask doesn't matter. Yeah, anyway, carry on. But it was all so phony. The dogs... And I was like, oh, yeah, I've seen these bits in movies. I've seen these happen in horror movies where there's like a crescendo of noise of like supporting characters or dogs or whatever you know that bring you to this crescendo then something happens and, and then and there's like Halloween the title it was so cliche it was just like the rest of the movie it was stolen from other movies without any understanding of why it works they just right. know that oh I like it when that happens but it wasn't stolen well because I thought the editing was really bad like no, if you're going to do that if you're going to do that you need to have like Michael 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 blah, 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 and then bam 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 like yeah, you yeah. have to no, everything was great fantastic yeah, thank you you have to have it go like, Michael, Michael, look at the man, look at the man, look at the man. And then have like, bam, 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 bam. Like have the music just like fucking nail you to the back of the seat. They didn't even do that. It just came up with like the Halloween thing and then a pumpkin, pumpkin reinflated. What is that even? <laughs> the whole thing is summed up for me. No, the whole thing is summed up by the pumpkin reinflating. That's what the whole film is summed up to me. But anyway, well, carry on. Right but yeah, so I knew right then, while it was happening, I thought... I'm going to hate this because this is this is stolen from other movies. Like I recognise, I've seen this in other movies, and it's not exciting or interesting or menacing or anything that's happening. Well, as this review descends, uh, predictably, maybe in some people's eyes, into negativity, uh, don't worry, the devil is on my side. Well, the big heist tells me so. In their album, Mo Seventy Five, the devil is on my side. Yeah, it is.
I liked the other thing. There was a bit when you know, they had the shot from above, and there was like the checkerboard of the of yeah. the yard and the squares and the guy standing in the middle of the square. Like that was really cool. It was a good shot, yeah. And it was, but it lasted a second, and then it just goes back down to the ground. I go, well, what did you, why wouldn't you linger on that? Like Carpenter would absolutely linger on that shot. Do you right. know what I mean? Like two, three minutes, you'd have a whole bit of just them walking across slowly across that checkerboard. Like, let's enjoy that. It's like, yeah, that's a nice shot. So we'll we'll do that for a second. But I'm not just. I mean, it was so phenomenally empty. Yeah. It wasn't saying anything. No. It was just stealing stealing set pieces wholesale from other Halloween. The bit in the bathroom was H two O, right? Yeah. When she goes into yep. the bathroom, that was stolen from H two O. The bit with the you know the flappy laundry in the background, that's from the, the original Halloween, one. right? Every single set piece was stolen from another movie. Yeah, there was nothing but, original but about it. W- w- while we're talking about the beginning, sorry. so yes, no, sorry. no, no, just because I want to kind of go through it chronologically and not that's fine. Yes, while I, I have thoughts, I, I, I can wanna... just keep moaning. No, 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 no it's fine. And I, I, I also don't want to do that. I want to kind of, as someone who like knows the franchise a bit, I, I want to kind I of being, like yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, talk about it a bit. So. Um, the uh, weirdest decision for me right. was if you're going to ignore all the other films yes. and you're just going to go Halloween and then this is 40 years later right? you don't need to spend the first 25 minutes of your movie um, setting up who Michael Myers is, Dr. Loomis is, Laurie Strode is, the mental... All of that, like the, the two journalists, journalists, the podcasters going around, right, and like trying to figure out Michael and trying to like interview Laurie Strode and whatever, that was all an exposition device, a horribly, horribly clunky and badly cast exposition device. And, I mean, unless the... Unless they honestly thought, but because this is my point, right? If if that was done for a new person coming in, right, who's never seen any of the Halloween films, then why would it fucking matter to the person that it was forty years later? Like it would, right? So the reason to do a recap of all that stuff is for the newcomer. But then, if you're a newcomer to the franchise and you literally have no knowledge of anything that's happened before, even the original movie, or even that this is a sequel to anything, if you just think this is a one-off standalone movie, then all the stuff about Laurie and it being 40 years later and who Michael is and the mask, none of that means anything. It only means something if you know about the original movie. So if you know something about the original movie, I don't need 20 minutes of like exposition with two English... Why are they English? Podcasters going around... Um, uh, uh, the the mental institution and Laurie Strode's house and all the rest of it. Like, just cut to the chase. He's in a mental institution. He's going to be moved to another one. He's clearly going to escape. And Laurie Strode is some kind of survivalist living out into the woods. Boom. First three scenes. Done. Next. On to the bit that we're all here for. I don't need 20 minutes at the beginning of the movie telling me ponderous details I already know. And, 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 and certainly, certainly, certainly do not, like, try and put some massive emphasis on the mask. The, the mask was purely a function of 
like you say, him covering up his face, disguising who he was, as he went about and did the killing at the, at, in the original. It was also a handy tool for Carpenter because Carpenter wanted to make it that when he comes out as an adult in the original and goes after Laurie, he's doing it as the shape and no longer Michael Myers. He's not doing it as a human, as a thing. he's doing it as a personification of evil. And the only way he felt he could represent that was by putting on like this white, you know, emotionless, uh, uh, featureless face on the killer so that you're not, you're projecting whatever you feel evil is onto that face rather than making it like, oh, it's all cracked and evil and blah, 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 blah. Like the eyes have been made to look evil and the mouth. Is, like that's completely missing the entire point. Now, okay, you can also argue that Halloween 4, 5, and 6 make the same mistake because Michael, every single uh, uh, film has the same mask and maybe it was a mistake with the fourth one. He should have had a different mask and so on. But the way this one sells the mask is that it... It's the original mask, because two, two through seven hasn't happened. So it's the original mask, and the mask itself has some sort of importance, which is not the case at all. Um, and like I say, it would have almost been a better film and had a better understanding of... If you want to modernize something, if you want to talk about, like, I don't know, the nature of evil or the nature of serial killers or the nature of survival or the nature of victimhood or whatever it is, then the mark is the mask is irrelevant. Like, haven't put on any mask. It doesn't have to be the Michael Myers mask. I haven't put on any mask. But what you're saying is, in the opening scene with the, the journalist confronting him in the thing, is like, we know this mask is iconic. Look how iconic this mask is. Like, it's, it's a marketing device at that point. And, and, and all you've done is you've gone... What, can he I, has to wear the mask, so let's have the journalist show up with it. Can, and can then, I just, so I, I think that what's interesting about, about that is, so I, I think what's going on, exactly what you're saying about the mask and not understanding it, and the whole reason why, I mean, I, it's not that I just, that it bored me, although it was boring. It was very I actively, boring. I actively hated it because it makes the, it's, it's why fanboys shouldn't make films like strange troubled men should make horror films do you know what i mean like cronenberg romero like they're odd they're odd people right it's just i'm just saying i don't think they are you see but okay oh well i think i well, think i think actually they're all they all have a good sense of humor they all have their wits about them they're all very no, 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 I, I get that but i'm just i saying, don't think they're weird creepy no, no no i don't i just mean okay maybe no more than like any normal person is i'm i, I know they're like you know in a sense, you know, they can talk. No, they're you know. intelligent. They're no. good about, they know what's scary. They know what... No, uh, I'm not... See, from a okay, psychological no, 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 standpoint. no, no, no. But I just, see, I, I disagree with that. I don't think that's... I think they have instincts as filmmakers as to what is scary and what works. But I don't think it's like, oh, I'm going to do... This is going to be like a psychological slam dunk if I do this. I think it's that... No, no, they are no, 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 but wait. I'm just, wait, I'm just saying. Why I'm about them, about Carpenter and Cronenberg and Romero and Stephen King and people, they're all like, you know, they're intelligent. And But if they, you go, hey, write something that scares me, and then they'll write something, and it will be, Jesus, and you'll be like shaken, and you won't really understand. The whole point about Halloween is it's scary, but you don't really know. I mean, obviously, like, it's scary that a guy's wandering around with a, but it's just a guy in a boiler suit and a William Shatner mask and a knife. There's no reason why, if you write that down, that that should be scary. But he's like, looked at himself he's asked himself what's frightening you know what frightens me and he's honest and intelligent enough to come up with something that doesn't need an explanation like Stephen King doesn't know half of why what he wrote I mean he was pissed out of mind most of the time he wrote the, the scariest stuff he wrote he was barely on planet earth when he was doing it. he was pissed and they were, they're all just reaching into themselves and saying what scares me and they're trying to put that honestly on the screen right Right. So what but I'm I saying, think that comes from a place of intelligence and creativity. I agree. I agree. I agree. I'm not arguing with that. I'm just saying they've looked within themselves, right, honestly and intelligently, and they brought something up. They maybe can't even explain why it's scary. They just know that it is. It's honest to them. It's real, right? Most of them actually, and I don't want to harp on this point, but I've watched a lot of interviews with all the people you're talking about. Right. Most of them can explain exactly why it's scary and why they thought it would work. 
I, I know that they don't think it's a slam dunk. They don't think, oh, this is. But they, they. What I mean is, there's a method in their madness. No, no, I know, one. I know. I, I guess what I'm saying is that, yeah, they can talk about. Well, of course, you know, Michael Myers personification of evil, and like anybody can come up with an idea and come up with a reason why. But why that thing? You say anyone can, but. No, 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 no modern filmmakers no, do. No, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm saying anyone can come up with something and explain um, afterwards why that thing has like meaning, which they do, Whatever, whoever makes the crappy horror, horror films. I'm sure they all talk about why the thing they made is like, oh, well, it means this and it means that. You know what I mean? What I'm saying is, Cronenberg does, I'm just saying, right? Cronenberg and Carpenter, they don't sit down and they and go, what is the personification of evil? and then come up with a guy in a boiler suit and a William Shatner mask. It's instinctive, right? And and I bet you he you know he saw some guy with a with a boiler suit or he saw the, the mask or something. Or it, and maybe there was like a process to it. But I'm saying it comes from a place that's not completely known or understood by that. They can explain it afterwards and they can try and impart yeah, it's great, thank you very much. They can try and impart its meaning and what they were trying to get across. But there are gaps all right, uh, in their understanding. Anyway, my point is... All right, is, we'll is take that, that as red, but... There's a difference between people who do that and people who watch that and think that's cool, right? Right. And if the people who made Halloween 2018 watched Halloween and went, Halloween is cool. Sorry. <clears throat> right? Michael yeah. Myers is cool. And it's a film, what we watched, in which Michael Myers is cool. He gets the mask because the mask is cool. And there's, that, there's even a slow motion bit of taking the mask out of the boot and putting the mask on slowly and everything he does is so cool as Carpenter doesn't think Michael Myers is cool man right Michael Myers scares the shit out of Carpenter right you know what I mean like that's that's what I'm saying it's that they've tapped into something King and Cronenberg and Carpenter and Romero and all of them. they've tapped into what scares them they, the people who made this movie haven't tapped into what scares them no. they've tapped into what is cool about Halloween or what they think is cool about Halloween like, what the fuck was that sandwich conversation? That's my, my point. Like, oh, oh yeah. no, no, wait, 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 wait. You just skipped way ahead. But yeah, the, the, the sandwich conversation was... So the whole 20 minutes, the first 20 minutes of the movie before it even gets going, before he even starts talking the streets. I was so... I've, I've watched a lot of very bad, low-budget horror movies. We even watched that Fatal Games thing, which I'm sure I've mentioned a bunch, but like... The Olympic, the, the Olympic, the one, one that's where, all built around javelins, and nobody gets killed with a javelin until the end. Um, right, yeah. But the biggest sin of Halloween 2018, certainly the first half of it, is that it's boring. It's fucking dumb. now. You, we could break it down, and we're talking a bit, talked a bit about like why and da 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 da. But ultimately, it's just boring. It's boring, and it's boring. and the, and and Sorry. and. and all through that first like 25 minutes or whatever that felt like an hour I was shifting in my seat very uncomfortable very bored very like oh make it stop and make something happen and then once it got into like the Halloween night and the kill started and da 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 I'm at least along for the ride at that point but then there were a couple of bits where out of nowhere considering the place to put humour in a Halloween movie um, is either in the characters like Loomis has some great like humorous moments um, like the um, he can't even drive well maybe someone around here gave him lessons like it's not a a bird joke but it like there's a human aspect to it that makes you chuckle especially the way like Pleasance delivers it or the bit where the little kids are going up to the Myers house and Pleasance like with a little playful grin it's like Lonnie, move your ass! Like that bit is is um, like there's a little laughter to it, but there's no like out and out like oh, and now we're gonna cut to a comedy sketch. And in this movie, it cuts to two policemen in the car, who, by the way, we haven't met, we don't know anything about them, we don't know who they are, and they're having a conversation, which is it's not even like subpar Tarantino. It's like it's like a child listened to the like like a virgin sketch from the beginning of Reservoir Dogs and was like I- I'm going to do that of- oh no sorry uh, uh, the the Royale with cheese from Pulp Fiction and went yeah I'm going to do that but with like a bon me sandwiches because I had one for lunch and I'm just going to put it in the script and I, 
it was at that point, having sat through the first 35 minutes, when that sequence with the two policemen in the car, I, I've, I don't think I've ever done this in a cinema. I actually put my head in my hands and went, oh God, make it stop. <laughs> and it wasn't for a fact. Like I was, they were talking about this fucking bon me sandwich. And I was just like, at, at that point I could have walked out. That's, I was that, that's so... the thing, like, there's no, none, of it, none of it comes from, this is what, none of it comes from the heart, none of it comes from the gut. It's all, it's just like two stoners, like replicating you know, a horror film that they think is really, really cool. And they understand yeah, that. Uh, in horror films, you have bits where, like, minor characters right. have, like, weirdly involved conversations about something minor before yes, they get killed, right? right. I, I know that's a thing that happens, and I really yeah, like those yeah. bits of movies, so we'll stick one of those in there. But it's just, like, there's not even the honesty of trying to make uh, money. As in, even, like, cash grab sequels, right? And you know you're watching something because, like, well, people want to watch Michael Myers movies, so let's just make a Michael Myers movie. So here's the bit where the woman gets chased through the woods. Here's the bit where the comedy sheriff, you know, has a conversation about sandwiches. And you're aware that you're just being, like, you know, you've paid your money and they're giving you what you paid for. And there's a certain honesty in that, even if it's a bit, you know, not lazy. But there's honesty in, like, well, let's give them what they paid for. Let's put on a show. Well, also, Whereas this is like This is, like, people looking at those movies... Right, and thinking that's cool. And then, like, it's it's even one removed yeah. from just cash grab nonsense. Right. It's so chronically empty. I mean, there's, a, there's, there's something in there that they get a sort of hint at with, like, well, what's the. Can I ask? Okay, so this is my, my question. Now. After I've asked it, I will shut Not, like, forever. But no, just I get for it. A I get it, yeah. Like, what's the purpose? Why is Michael Myers scary in 2018? Right? Because it's different than 1978, right? He was scary in 1978 because, you know, youth, promiscuity, like the horrors of, you know, life and men, you know, and, and how fucking grim it was to be young in the 70s, right? Like, hey, you know, you're having fun now, smoking fags and drinking beer and having sex, but in about two years, your life is going to end. You know, you're going to be in a dead end job and you'll be miserable and it'll be, you know, like life is fucking coming. There's a whole lot of things you can talk about, but it means something. What does it mean in 2018? I mean, this it's not as if there's not material to work with, with, you know, uh, homi- uh, like violent men getting what they want and expecting like no consequences and women having to put up with you know this kind of behavior and a world in which there is you know <clears throat> the world seemingly is divided into good and evil you know and what are we going to do about it and how are we going to defend us there's like there's something you can hang it on it doesn't need to be a lot but like fucking something hang it on something okay I was so like, why are we doing it that dovetails into a little bit of what i was going to say later which is and i'm glad i waited till i saw the movie Till I had, till I vocalised this. Since the, in the lead up to the movie coming out, and since the movie's come out, and this is all, to be honest, through interviews with Jamie Lee Curtis, Jamie Lee Curtis's Instagram, Jamie Lee Curtis's Twitter. It's mostly from Jamie Lee Curtis, who was good and was not in it nearly enough. Right, but like I've said, <clears throat> Entertainment Weekly and various other places have been more than happy to. Curtis, whether she decided herself or whether someone said like, oh, this should be the storyline behind Michael Myers and behind why we're doing Halloween 2018, was this whole idea of um, the, the, the story of the victim and what does it mean to be a victim and, and, and what, what, what do people do about that, especially women and the Me Too movement and da 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 and the shame of that so so when when she first started to to do that the thing that went through my mind was this and it's a much deeper maybe a longer conversation than we have time for now but it was this on one hand there was a part of me where i was like oh it's a it's a shame like black lives matter and like other uh, movements that the me too movement now seems like it's ended its for sale uh, um, 
what's the word? Period? Period, whatever. For sale period. Meaning, at a certain point, because everything these days is marketing, everything is, and not just for movies, but everything is marketing. Everything is tainted. It's literally, we were talking about Bill Hicks earlier. It's yeah, yeah. literally the sketch he does where he's like, I'm caught in a web. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter yeah, what yeah. I do. Everything is marketing. We're actually living that right now, right down to, like I say, Black Lives Matter has been up for grabs. Me Too movement is up for grabs. You know, uh, uh, people are making money left, right, and center off the back of Trump. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, it's everything is for sale. I really wanted watching the movie for that to be paid off because while Jamie Lee Curtis was going on about it, I was in conflict. And again, middle class heterosexual white guy nobody gives a shit what I think and that's they shouldn't and that's fine I'm not I'm really not well, saying, I do no no but I'm, well, I'm, really, I'm here I'm really not claiming any authority on this but on one hand I was like put off that a movement that I'm actually very supportive of was being um, used to sell this slasher movie especially the slasher reboot remake rehash cash grab 40 year whatever you want to call it then my the reverse happened in my head because I was like well I've always been pro genre films uh, often because they provided either African Americans or women or even gay characters um, and transgender characters and various other different types of characters platforms to be heroes or to be anti-heroes or to at least be participants you know what i mean now sure people can joke about like the black guy always gets killed first in slasher films and they can you know be turned off by the exploitative elements of sex and nudity and whatever in those films that women have to undertake but ultimately in most of the leading uh, uh slasher films or even horror films in general um outside of interestingly the thing um, most of the time there is a strong female protagonist and even if she has to go through exploitative elements to become that strong female protagonist the um, uh, the contract you enter into in a genre film is I'm going to get all my you know, sick and depraved uh, uh, side catered to with my, you know, blood and guts and tits and ass and whatever um, but I'm also, because it's a genre film and because it's a B-movie and because people are going to write it off, we're going to be able to slip in the odd bit of social messaging or whatever without it being like I'm clubbing you over the head with it. You can take it from the movies or not. And I chose very often with genre films to champion the fact that those characters in there. And every time I would hear like Hollywood be like, yeah, we've, we've done a female driven action movie I'm like where have you been for the last 40 years because there's a shit ton of female driven action movie where have you like when they were talking about like oh this Halloween 2018 is a final is a, is a movie where finally the final girl gets to be empowered and da, 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 da. and I'm like actually for about 40 years the final girl has been empowered in fact you know so you can go back even before that so um, a lot of my uh, praise and support of genre film has been tied into something that's inherently socio-political without wanting to sound wanky or pretentious, but there is that element in it. So then I was like, well, is it perfectly justified then to use a socio-political movement like Me Too to sell a genre film if I've always been more or less making that statement myself, not necessarily to sell them, but to at least encourage people to watch them. To understand, yeah, I'm done. Thank you very much. Um, I'm still in the Thank you. So... I was knotted up in that, and I, I still haven't really come to a conclusion. Like, I don't think you need to. I don't think the, the film made you. No, but that's my point. So what? So to tie it back to what you were saying, so that was a conundrum I was in when I hadn't right. seen the film. So if I went in with any expectation of this movie outside of me being a fan of the Halloween franchise and wanting like a decent fifteen minutes of like stalk and slash or um, Laurie Strode being heroic or whatever or even a fucking character arc um, what I wanted to get was that sense of empowerment because all Jamie Lee Curtis has been posting about was like 
she posted the three women who play her, Judy Greer, and whoever the younger woman was. I'm sorry, I don't remember her name. And that she was like three uh, uh, generations of strong strode women was like the post on Instagram and various other posts like that. And the, the recently she was like, it's the highest October opening um, for uh, a female driven movie. Uh, especially a female of a 50 movie, etc., etc. There was a lot of talk about that in the lead up to it. So I was like, well, let me at least get that from the movie. Let me at least see what it was in the script that made Jamie Lee Curtis, who, by the way, had already come back and done H2O. So she'd already done her uh, 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 Laurie Kicks Michael's Ass movie. She'd already done her character arc of empowerment and overcoming adversity and... Right. all that kind of stuff she'd done that movie 20 years ago she'd even then come back and let herself be killed in Halloween 8 I presume they needed an extension to the house or something I don't know but whatever um, so I was like let me see something in this that makes me understand not only signing on the line to do this movie 20 years later when you've already told this story in, in, you know to all effect but, but um, also that uh, prompted this endless stream of, of uh, Instagrams and tweets and stuff like that, which I found very like cool and empowering. I'm like, great, show me. It is not in the movie. I mean, ab apart from the fact that yes, it's three generations of women, and and you're watching like, if 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 that's enough, like if if them uh, 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 occasionally fighting Michael is enough for people to go hurrah for women, then I'm sorry, you haven't seen 40... I, you know, I come back to that thing. I'm like, you need to go watch some films. Like, you just need to go away and watch some films. Because if this is what, uh, uh, fem, you know, feminist movie making is in, in, in 2018, then it's in a really dire state. Now, is Jamie Lee Curtis a woman over 50 who's leading a movie? Yes. Is, should there be way more of them? Fuck Yes. If this leads to more of them, how a fucking will you? But that, but none of this empowerment, uh, uh, me too positivity, or any of this stuff is in this movie. So can I, can I, can I, can I jump in? Is it or no, 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 no. I, I mean, I, it's, it's. I mean, I, again, middle class heterosexual no, 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 white no, no, guy. No, 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 no. You're, you're right. Well, controversial, controversial. I'm sure everyone has either switched off, is screaming at the podcast, or maybe. Maybe they've taken a big, deep breath. They've thought about what I'm trying to say. And just maybe, just maybe they understand. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, that is the wonderful uh, thing about podcasts is that all opinions can be voiced. But it is a shame uh, if I let you down. It's a shame that I let you down. That's this song from... Mo 75. You see what I'm doing? I'm weaving in the names of the songs and the podcast. I don't know. It's a shame that I let you down. Mo 75, Volume 1 by The Big Heist. Listen to it. Mo 75, Volume 1 by The Big Heist. I completely have not mentioned Volume 1 this whole fucking episode. Uh, volume 2 and Volume 3 are coming out in November and December, I believe. Uh, but Volume 1, Mo 75, The Big Heist. Check it out on uh, Spotify or buy it on iTunes or wherever music is found. Um, but don't forget, it's a shame that I let you down. Enjoy the song. Maybe when we come back, Jim will pick us right back up. Or maybe not. Who knows? Keep listening. It's a shame that I let you down. We had a good run, but now we're done. Seems like you had a time, but it's not as if I can read your mind. With each second the truth gets harder to find And it's a shame that I let you down Sugar iced tea girl, you're feisty I don't regret my decision Except when I hear all your revisions Oh my, this is one deep division Stepped on the acceleration and
coming to my place And meanwhile, you seem so complacent With your bow who stands adjacent And I wonder, how good could you be doing If your sole focus is my ruin I'll try it again if that's what you're wanting You've already poisoned all my other options And, and here's, here's the other thing, right? And this is what annoyed me, and it kind of ties into what you're saying. What the fuck was it building to? Because there was briefly, there was a moment where I thought, are they going to pull this out of the back? I mean, this is right at the end. Right, right, right. And I thought, if they're going to do a bit where they basically lure Michael to this house, and then Jamie Lee Curtis becomes Michael, and Michael becomes... Jamie, oh, sorry, sorry. when Jamie Lee Curtis becomes Michael and Michael becomes Jamie Lee Curtis and he's like trapped in a house and she's hunting him and like and the other thing is right it's not like because this is what I was going this, would, this, if this is what they're going to do this would completely work because um, she can kill him over and over again because obviously he can't die so instead of Michael like going around the house or whatever killing like nine people she can kill him nine times. And right, she right, can right. hunt him down, just like right. he hunts women down, right? In this trap that she's laid. And there could be, like, hidden knives everywhere and, like, special traps and all the shit that you need because she's had 40 years to prepare this trap. Right. And then you could have had a half-hour set piece of her hunting him. And, and she can be successful every time and stab him and then run away. And then he has to, you know, he gets a little bit more fucked up every time, whatever. But, like, you could totally go to town on that. You can have all the thrills of your slasher, right? Of yep. your knife going in and your gruesome kills and all the rest of it. And then every time he gets back up, because the one thing that Myers does is he always gets back up. And the bit where she falls off the roof and he looks back, and that's another, you know, from the end of Halloween back. 1. Right, at the end of Halloween 1. And then she's gone. So, it, and I thought, if, if this has all been building up, to an extended set piece of Laurie as Michael and Michael as Laurie, that would be very cool. And then it was just, it was nothing. It was nothing. They, she, they hit him with a frying pan. There's a bit where she's going around the room. Because there's a whole thing where it's like, she clears a room and then puts the, the gate down. And then, there's an, and then she does that all the way through the house. going, okay, I, mean, I guess that's kind of cool. And then she gets to another room, which as you rightly pointed out, like, just turn the light on. And it's a room full of mannequins. Yeah, that's a good plan. If you're going to build a house, right, where you worry that Michael's going to get in, don't fill a room with no light bulbs, okay, no light bulbs, and lots of mannequins, right? What's the... Where's the benefit? Right, but right. it's only going to lead to you wandering around there in the dark, worried about where Michael well, is. I mean, this, this was, was the other thing. All... Okay, but... If you waited last 40 thing, years thing, and you know thing. he's outside, why stand against the door? Stand back from the door. I, I know, I'll, I'll go one more, you know. If you've built a house specifically to defend yourself against Michael Myers, then don't put fucking glass in the front door. If you punch, you can lean in and take out your metal bar. Right. You f- what the fuck? Also, don't put, the, don't put the floodlights out on the garden till, like, 20 minutes in. Put them on all the time. Yeah. Then, she's got all these monitors set up. Never once checks any of them. She's got like four monitors or whatever in the background. Like never once is there even no. a scene also, where she's like... how is it... If it's a trap... It's like, it's not a room. It's a trap. It's not oh, a cage. It's, it's a, a trap. It's a trap. Okay, so, okay, so let me just... So your plan is hide in a place with only one exit. Yeah. Wait for him to discover the exit. Yeah. Rip off the front. And then get past him up the stairs. Yeah. And then even though he's ripped the top of the trap off, hope you have enough time to, to set the, the fire lever. to pull the lever in that's that's your you've had 40 years that's your plan right because there's a bit in there where you have to get past michael myers on the stairway right. where i feel like it's a bit dodgy right also in halloween h2o she takes an axe to him right why w- the guns are all very well but like if you want to actually like destroy him surely bodily dismemberment should be your goal because the only thing we haven't done in a Halloween movie, apart from Halloween Age to O, is like remove his limbs and his head. But even assuming, even assuming that you, look, I'm with you. Get a chainsaw. Get a get a massive axe. Get a sword. Get a anything other than a pistol and a and a wing and a prayer. Also, 
I don't know about you, but all the time she's wandering around the house with a gun. So I, I've seen movies. I know that the amount of time it takes you to swing the gun around to whoever's running up behind you, they've knocked the gun away and they've got you up against the wall and they're strangling you. Right. Like, that's not... Th- this is not a plan. Oh. This is not a... And more importantly than that, I, I know how this is going to end. This is what I mean about, like, stoners making um, facsimiles of films they think are cool. They don't get... That you need, like, the, the, the character picks up a shotgun because that's all there is, you know? And they're, like, frightened... And they're like hunting or whatever. But if someone was hunting, like, they wouldn't do it like that. There's no like it's it's sort of bits and it's what happens. The, the whole film is what happens when you you take a bit from one film and a bit from another film and a motivation from here and a character of art from there and you just go well because it's all from Halloween films and we're just paying homage. It'll all work. It'll all be fine. But right. it's just built on nothing. Well, because, it's also because it's also... there's no his and his my my final thing. There's no reason. In the, in, the, in the hearts and the minds of the people that made this film. There's no reason for this film to exist except that they think the Halloween is cool. That's it. No, but the... the and, I, and I've heard people give similar se- sentiments and I would agree predominantly. I think that... Um, to, to look more at the writing of it... Yeah. Like I said, the... the, the the recap is redundant yeah. because you're already and annoying. You're already making it. You've already I mean, st- redundant is bad, but annoying, annoying, and redundant. boring, and redundant. Um, it's like a hell of a way to begin. Them, but maybe. but you've also got yeah. Well, first of all, no, like even Carpenter knows that he has to have the pre-credit scare, right? Then you meet Laurie. And during meeting Laurie, there were like little scares. Michael's behind a bush, Michael's whatever. Yeah, Michael, yeah. A cat Michael, jumps out. Whatever. Right, so that by the time you, it gets to evening, you've got um, the slasher killer going around doing the slashing, and you've got Pleasance and the Sheriff doing the, the you know, we're near, nervous older guys, but we know we've got to kind of step up and fix this as and when he shows up. Um, and meanwhile, we'll throw Pleasant a whole bunch of amazingly cool lines he can say. Yeah, and then you've got, you've got someone, you need someone in the, in the movie going, but I'm telling you, he's trouble. People go, shut up, old man. <laughs> you know? Right. Like, that's the thing. Well, when so, it's like, so, so, but by negating the rest, I would argue, by negating the rest of the Halloween franchise, by getting rid of the second one, where uh, she's terrorised in the hospital and she escapes and at the end Pleasance blows up himself and Michael um, even though he comes back later on in the franchise but he's badly scarred but whatever Um, and by negating uh, uh, the Jamie Lloyd story and by, by kind of it means that you're telling me that for 40 years Laurie Strode's been a victim and that in this one night there's going to be a like a change of heart there's going to be a, a, an uprising whatever and the weird thing about it was is there really wasn't like she was still and I get maybe this is what they're trying to say about victimhood or whatever but like and I get it she was still afraid at the end of the movie to like um, face her uh, her past and face her whatever and so on and so forth and I'm sure there's stuff can destroy someone for 40 years but it it doesn't there wasn't enough of if you're going to do 20 minutes at the beginning of the movie that's exposition give me the 20 minutes of Laurie Strode don't give me 20 minutes of two fucking journalists wandering around talking about shit I already know I don't don't, nobody needs that literally nobody needs that Um, and if you if you're trying to sell it to a new crowd just be like um this guy's the bad guy. He's in an insane asylum. This is the woman he tortured 40 years ago by killing all her friends. Meet this woman. Meet her family. Meet her friends. But literally, Laurie's backstory in this is three lines of dialogue. It's when the journalist comes up and goes, you lost custody of your daughter and you've had two failed marriages. That's literally the extent of the backstory we get for Laurie. And then in the... Um, uh, Judy Greer, her daughter, tells her granddaughter, um, 
like this was my upbringing i learned how to shoot a gun when i was like eight right this is the extent of that there is no like if you want to tell laurie strode's story and you want to explain to me why like a victim is a victim for 40 years and why there would still be fear and why da, 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 like show me some of that tell me some of that and don't just have like her sitting in a car knocking back a small bottle of Jack Daniels and then going into a dinner and being all weird. Like it would, <laughs> I know that's what you think would be a reaction or, or what you think is like depth, but it, I mean, I'd, I don't know, maybe I missed the point. Yeah. No, yeah. no, 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 no. But I'm I just, not, like no, to me, like Again, show no, no, me it's just like, the Laurie It's, a, it's another story. scene. It's another scene. That, that thing of her in the car drinking the little, they've stolen that from somewhere else as well. I don't know where they stole Halloween it from. H2O. But it, it's all. But do you know mixed. how they do it in Halloween H two O? In Halloween H two O, there's never a bit where she's like, "I'm an alcoholic," and she's like drinking or whatever. But in Halloween H two O, she sat down with her. She's the the uh, principal of a high school, like a private school up in the mountains, heavily uh, uh, high doors, high gate, heavily secured. Um, she goes out for lunch with her uh, professor boy. One of the professors in the high school is like her boyfriend. She's never really told him any of her past and she's under an assumed name and she's not Laurie Strode right now and da 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 They go sit down and they're having a dinner, uh, they're having a, a lunchtime uh, uh, chat and away from the school and da 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 da. And he goes off to the bathroom. And in the time that he goes off the bathroom, she drowns, she downs a whole glass of white wine. Well, like wipes her lips and goes, could you refill me please? Like quickly, so that it looks like she's not really like drinking all the time. Like that's... You're right, that's more character work in that five second scene of a not particularly well-loved Miramax cash grab sequel right. than they managed in the whole movie. Because it's supposed to be all about her. Right. No one said, Adam and H2O, at last, Laurie Strode gets the power. Like, no one sold it like that. It was all like, hey, that Josh Hartner kid that was in that film you liked, we've got him in, and basically, now the horror films are cool again, we've made one. Yeah. But it's still, they still had more, th- because the people in it, even though they were just like, out to make a buck for Miramax at the time, still had enough heart and soul to try and, as you rightly say, like sneak something in there that's kind of cool. But everything in this movie, every single part of it was stolen from somewhere else without but not in a like well I've got a story I want to tell and I'm going to take bits from other places in order to tell that story because that's legitimate you know it's perfectly legitimate to go I want to tell this story and the best way for me to tell it is to use a bit from here and a bit from there because I know what I've got I've got their vision but there's no vision there's no like I need to tell this story right. it's I'm going to steal as I'm going to roll the camera and try and fit as much stuff also, as I think is cool into an hour and a half movie. And how is that? It was like an hour and a half, right? It hour and 45 felt minutes. So hour long. and 45 minutes. So long. But the message also was weird because it was like. It, 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 it was like, well, what we're going to say is victimhood is someone who becomes like a survivalist nutcase hermit living in the woods. And I'm sorry. If I was a, a, a woman who had undergone some trauma, whether it was fatherly abuse or a, a husband or whatever, like all the Me Too stuff, um, they walk around proudly every day and, and, and run uh, incredibly impressive lives and make differences and have careers and have families and have whatever. They don't live up in a mountain for 40, 40 years, like whatever. And... Yeah, the, that's it, the thing, it, isn't it? So, it's like, thing. so if you're trying to tell me, well, it's the story of victimhood and it's trying to explain this, it's trying to explain that, it's like, well, actually, it's insulting to victims is what it is. It's not particularly deep or uh, 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 explanatory of no, victimhood. If, if anything, it's like, it's flattering. Like, a, like at, it's, it's one of those times when there's a character in a movie going, but, you know... It, when the character goes, look, there's nice things in the world, and I'm not going to, I don't want to live a life where I'm constantly paranoid and afraid and living in the woods and miserable and alone and cold and frightened that a boogeyman's going to take a knife to me. Because. Well, I, that was that was said in the movie. No, no, but that's what I'm saying. But like, right. but the movie was like negating that. It was like that that was a naive point of view. It's like, but it's like, the, what they're saying is, it was worthwhile, Jamie Lee Curtis, pissing away 40 years of my life you know psychologically scarring her daughter because for one night they had like a rubbish plan 
<laughs> no, right. I'm so it glad could you just put it as that e- way. It could I'm just so as easily have gone. Away, listen, that's... by the way, if a bloke in a boiler suit, a William Shatner mask and a knife turns up, stand at the bottom of these stairs, pick up a gun and shoot him. Now let's go and have an ice cream. Like, that would have been the end of it. Or... If we know he's going to come through the door, let's have a chainsaw rigged up so I pull a little thing and a chainsaw comes swinging down and chops his head. No, I like that idea, Mum. By the way, should we cover up the glass in the door so we can't punch through it yeah. and just open the door? Yeah. Yeah, no, good idea. Great. What if they don't move him on Halloween? That would be an idea, right? Yeah. Hey, it's been 40 years. We're finally moving to another facility. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very you. much, eh? Thank you. But... You know, let's just put him in a low security bus with other prisoners. Yeah. With, but for God's sake, make sure you pair him with a doctor who, for absolutely no reason at all, is going to go crazy. Is going to go crazy and bust him out. Because so, again, because they know that there are films right where a character you least expect to be helping out the guy, right, has an unhealthy attachment to him, ends up having. Yeah, but that doesn't make any sense. With like, have Loomis or don't have Loomis. Right. If you don't have Loomis, have a guy who is, like, impressionable. But not, a, like, he's supposed to be Loomis. He sounds like Loomis. He's a bit old and whiz. And I was going, okay, fine, I get it. But don't have that guy. Well, also, be so the one who's, like, the helping thing. out Michael. This is the other thing, right? So let's quickly go through it. There's the line by the kids where they go, um, I thought he was meant to be, like, the brother of the killers. And she's like, no, that was just, like, some dumb, like, totally dumb rumour, like, totally not true. I'm like, all right, listen. I get it. John Carpenter said that at three in the morning when he was writing Halloween 2, he had to come up with something and he made him Laurie Strode's brother, right? But actually, when you consider the fact that there's like seven films in the main franchise and then like eight in this one and two remakes, having him have some like attachment to Laurie Strode actually continued that franchise. If you take that away and he's just like some nut who just has like a weird fixation with the the Laurie Strode or whatever. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Because um, actually it has its cake and, it, and eats it too because it's saying, oh yeah, I mean, when Michael gets out, he's coming right for Laurie Strode. Right, but but why? Well, she's the one who got away. But lots of people got away. Right. Like, lots of people didn't die in Halloween. Yeah. Right? Unless there's... Well, not the main cast that we see, but yes, lots of other people. No, 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 no. But I mean, in the in the original movie, 1978, lots of people do not die. Right. There's lots of times Michael Myers like nearly kills somebody or is hiding and they, you know, it's something changes well, or whatever. A, so it's the, not like every time Michael goes, I'm going to kill that person. They die. Like, so then also, so, so this is the other thing, right? Is that it then gets all messed up because of this whole, like, let's get rid of it. This was the other point I wanted to make. It then gets all messed up trying to go, trying to show Michael is just a mindless killer as opposed to, like, out for Laurie Strode, but at the same time going, oh, he's going to end up Laurie Strode. Like, so there was a sequence, and I kind of tried to find the sequence cool, or not cool because he was killing people, but, like, cool in a, oh, this is showing me something or saying something. There was a sequence where without any emotion, without any method, without anything, Michael goes in and out of houses and just kills a bunch of nobodies, right, in various ways, sticks a knife through them, hits them with a hammer, whatever it is. He goes through and he just very plainly kills people. There's no big drama about it. There's no, in fact, those bodies are not even discovered in the span of the movie. Um, And it was... It wasn't all in one shot, but it was certainly like all in one kind of like style and all in one kind of part of the film. And for me, I'm like, I get it. By, it's your way of saying, oh, he's not Laurie Strode's brother. He's not trying to go after family members. He's not trying to do blah, 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 blah. He's just a serial killer. And maybe he'll get to Laurie because he'll recognize her because she was around 40 years ago, but really it's not. Then, like you say, the third act of the movie is entirely about his one dogged pursuit of uh, uh, Laurie and her family. And even the trigger word in the back of the police car is Judith Myers, his sister from the first one. So wait a minute, you're saying his sister, that is important to him? Like all of a sudden you're going to go, oh, it's so stupid that he would be someone's brother. But then you're going to make the sister the trigger word? Like... Like none of it, none of it made any sense. So, but anyway, you have the line about that, which is a reference to Halloween too. You had the the kids in the 
uh, pumpkin mask, the witch mask, and the skeleton mask, which is from Halloween 3, which is in even a Michael Myers film. You had the three kids skipping along uh, wearing those masks. And I'm like, that isn't even from a... But okay, fine. Reference that. Weird. <laughs> then um, you had the guy dressed up in the um, like horny devil outfit. That is sort of a reference to part five, where one of the key female characters dresses up like that. Um, the weirdest thing is that they had no nods to Jamie Lloyd at all. Like, there was no... Um, uh, there was no reference to her clown outfit because in, in Halloween 4 and 5 she wears like a clown outfit that is reference to the clown outfit Michael wore when he was right. um, there was none of that and I, I, I was looking for it um, but then the worst outside of the Bon Me sandwich scene which can go down in history as one of the worst scenes ever written by anyone <laughs> uh, I've seen plays written by six year old children that have more insight into human nature than that one conversation about it was sandwich. sort of briefly like being catapulted back to the 90s where every film had to have like right. a, a but, conversation about savages okay but even this even in H2O which has the most annoying through line in H2O is the security guard played by LL Cool J believe it or not um, is a struggling novel writer who's always on the phone to his girlfriend and he's always like reading out passages from the book that he's struggling to write and she's always like laughing at him and whatever and he's like but listen baby I'm trying to like this is what I'm trying to say and it's meant to be romantic and, like there's this through line where he's always like trying to write stuff right and it's irritating the way he plays it is annoying and cliche and whatever but it's throughout the movie there's like a one scene two scene three scene and then he's killed like it's a, it's, it's a thing like it's throughout the movie if we'd seen Mutt and Jeff these two policemen at the beginning of the movie like squabbling over a sandwich and then in the middle of the movie like one of them had mustard on his shirt and he's like oh that must have been from the sandwich mm. and then in the third mm. scene before they died they were talking about a sandwich that at least would have been something to justify the sandwich but there right. was no justification but the other worst line in the movie was um, Jamie Lee Curtis going up to the new doctor with a mustache and go oh I guess you're the new Loomis and she might as well have turned to the screen and gone, -da -da. Yeah. like I mean, it was, it was like, the, the, it, it was just intolerable. It was just intolerable. And I'm, I'm, I'm really, it, I'm really, 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 really disappointed. And I could go, you know, look, <clears throat> anyone who enjoyed this film, please thank me to task, ask me questions. I will be very explanatory and open about it I could probably <laughs> sit here and talk about it for another half an hour you can accuse me of going in with the wrong attitude you can accuse me of being too purist you can accuse me of being old and bitter and all the rest of it but I'm sorry as Bill Hicks once said to bring it back to Bill Hicks take a step back take a deep breath it's a piece of shit and move on like the um, the endless justification for these films and the fact that these movie makers get away with flat out, like, subpar, illiterate bilge. <laughs> um, and, and we all have to wave a flag for it because uh, it was the first movie with a woman over 50 to make $78 million in October. I'm sorry, make a better movie with a woman over 50. And I'll, I'll praise it till I'm blue in the face. Well, I, I'm not... I I, and I would say I came into it with no preciousness about the franchise. I recognised a couple of sequences, um, but I, I'm sure I didn't spoil the Easter eggs or whatever that you did. But I, I mean, I, I hated it. I hated it because it was boring, because it was pointless, because it was choppy. It had no sense of mood or style. It didn't have anything to it at all. There was no heart no soul it was empty garbage I, I mean I really I haven't seen a film that I disliked in the cinema that much since hey, nice Atomic Blonde the check we're going to close oh okay fair oh, enough I thought, I thought it closed at 11 I did that late nearly oh wow yeah we've been talking to... fair enough anyway I'm still glad I went to see it with you no, I'm, look, I'm super glad to go and see it. And, and, you know, if I wanted to kind of pay it some lip service, it was satisfactorily shot. I guess shot we go up, right? And well lit, you know what I mean? Like yeah, let's just go up. 
you know, it was satisfactorily shot. It was well lit. It was I know, I watchable. I didn't, but I didn't, I didn't think it was and, and Jamie Lee Curtis was good in it, but she wasn't given anything to do. She was given no character. And Judy Greer, man, she is such a good actress, and she keeps getting put in like fifth fiddle roles in like Ant Man and Halloween. It's just so depressing. Yeah. She's such a great actress. She's done some really good work on TV as well. Well, um, thanks for having me. Man. I'm oh. glad we went to see it. I'm glad we became a member of the Thingamajig. And they did have like lean back seats. And it is well, fun. We'll, we'll, we'll head outside because I want to say one more thing. Okay. All right. So we're now outside the outside the outside diner. the diner because we were weirdly like shooed out of there, even though whatever. Anyway. It was a very nice diner. Uh, if you go there, get the Murray Hill. Uh, it's a, a fine sandwich, well worth your time. Pastrami was very lean. Um, I wish I got it. Mine was, mine was like the, the, it was just the, it was a classic sandwich where the ingredients sounded better than it all actually works together. But I, but it wasn't bad tasting. I just tried something else next time. Um, but uh, oh shoot, what, what time is it? No. Um, Shit, I'm on it. 10.30, 10.35. Oh, fuck, yeah, I'm not going to be able to get the L. Well, not? What time's the L show then? 10.45. Oh, Shit, fuck. I totally didn't think about that. Uh, I How guess, did you get home? I guess I'm going to have to get a car or figure it out. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Yes, so uh, what I'm glad about is that it wasn't a very good film, and we did spend a lot of time like talking about why it wasn't a very good film, yeah. but... It yes. didn't depress me. I no. really enjoyed the conversation. Yes. And yes. Uh, thank you very much for being my co-host. Thanks, uh, man. I hope long it will continue. Absolutely. And I thank want you. everyone to follow you on Twitter. Thank you very much. At J underscore E underscore A underscore Wallace. Uh, follow him and ask him stuff about being the co-host of the After Movie Diner. Because no, I'll be very know, happy to answer it. He will. And he'll tell you interesting stories from his side of things. And he can lie about me and all sorts <laughs> of stuff. It'll be fun. <laughs> Uh, so do that have fun enjoy it thanks again Jim and uh, I wouldn't bother saying Halloween 2018 unless like uh, other people you're either more forgiving than I am or, or you've see not it. seen 40 years worth of movies and uh, we'll it's see all Halloween yeah or watch Halloween H2O because it's so much better anyway enough done goodbye Cheerio. and can you hear there that I'm out of breath simply trying to walk and talk at the same time. My goodness, boy, do I need to get in shape. Anyway, we're going to end this episode with the title track of Mo 75, Volume 1 by The Big Heist. Uh, that's right, it's the song Mo 75. I hope you've enjoyed uh, all the little clips from this album that I've played throughout the show, and I do, do really hope that you go check out Mo 75, Volume 1 by The Big Heist, on Amazon, Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, wherever music is found. Uh, just do it. Go listen to Mo 75 Volume 1 by The Big Heist and enjoy this last track, Mo 75. <laughs> Stay to prove that Mo 75 was here one day with paint that sprayed to mark this glorious time. She's so sweet, we can feel the heat and we can't escape the sweat. The windows down, cruise through town, everything is fresh and get in.
rock wool movie reminds me of you taking room 75 and the dog that barked all alone in the dark still happy to be alive sitting by the pool after school singing mo 75 just one more shot or a passing thought is all i need to survive and getting ready and going steady and going 